Uh, hello everyone, good afternoon. Um, I'm from DJI Enterprise, and uh, along with me, we have uh, Richard from Surveyor. We're gonna show you some results we found out about the, the latest DJI trees for Enterprise oh, Series drone. All right, Oops. so Oops. let's get started. Well, everyone's checking that out, I'll just introduce myself uh, real quick. I'm Rich Butkus, uh, with, I'm director of UAV over at like Surveyor. Um, I've been uh, specializing in the past 12 years in survey technology as well as uh, UAV data acquisition. Um, we have been integrating UAV into our daily workflow uh, for the past seven years now. My name is Ron Lee and I work for DJI Enterprise team as a solution engineer. What I do is basically understand what market needs, what you guys need, what kind of tool you guys want, and report back to, and talk to our engineers and development uh, engineers and let them know what the demand is and to develop next generation product. So I want to share a chart to everyone. Um, this is basically what we have foreseen when we talk about using uh, the right tool for the right amount of work or right project. Uh, we can think of it as uh, if we can have a look at X, that's our cost, whether it's time cost, maintenance cost, or the equipment cost or training cost. And on the Y side, we have performance. Well, that's uh, not necessarily means it's accuracy. It could mean the uh, efficiency as well. But when we overlook at these chart, uh, we see this parabolic line over there. And obviously, this upper limit is our techno uh, technological bottleneck or anything is experimental, which is something we can never hit. And in the middle, I would like to draw a divider that kind of separates the geospatial tools into two categories. One is for surveying data measurement and data capturing. And on the bottom is more toward uh, documentary purpose as well as uh, uh, vi visualization focused. And in reality, isn't, it, it is not like a perfect parabolic line, isn't it? So we can make uh, if we have a look at this uh, vertex point over here, that's our entry point. When we invest more money, when we invest more time, obviously we're going to see improvements on the performance, but we're going to head to a barrier, almost like a barrier, that we have to invest a lot more. That's the cost of the sensor. And previously we have seen drones somewhere here. The drone is not that accurate, and we're getting there moving up because now the drone with the cheaper components we're able to increase the accuracy especially for you guys have been using for 10 years um, but when we lay out all the solution out there in the market we do actually want to select a solution toward the upper left corner because we want to reduce cost but increase the performance finding the necessary tool fulfills your accuracy requirement is the same thing. You don't want to pay too much just to achieve a better result that you're probably not finding it necessary. So we have these products over there, kind of uh, overlaid on this map over here. We have a typical drone system that is not RTK, PPK capable. And uh, they're over here. So they're not so accurate, but they're cheap and easy to fly and extremely efficient because you are covering good amount of area. And then we also have drones that is over here, which is RTK system. And we have the uh, non-RTK system with GCP, which can also improve your efficiency. Now, this is where we place the latest matrix for enterprise in this chart. We want to make it slightly better than the RTK drone but with lower cost in terms of training, in terms of uh, maintenance. So I'd like to briefly cover the milestones we did in DJI for the past few years. Ever since 2016, that was a popular drill out there. We call it Phantom 4. A lot of people are using it because the reason it's a milestone is because it integrates a decent camera system with UAV. So two system into one, that, that was a milestone. And moving forward to 2018, that is not a milestone we have because we integrated RTK module precision camera system optimized for serving photogrammetry use 
and we have included our RDK solution that it doesn't require the uh, internet. 2022, we released a upgraded version of a Phantom 4 DK. We call it Matri We call it Mavic 3 Enterprise. It is nearly three times more efficient. And when you uh, when you talk about cost efficiency over a long period of time, that is a very excellent option. And of course, today we have released the Matrice 4 Enterprise with a bunch of uh, new updates, kind of uh, moving forward and expanding the capability of our systems. So with that being said, last year, about two months ago, I was able to reach out to Richard and uh, from Surveyor, I was like, hey, Richard, we have this new drone and I'd like you to test it out and for us. Richard, you are literally the first customer in the United States to test out this system. It was running a beta firmware as well. So with that being said, I'd like to have Richard briefly talk about the project he used and uh, the result he found out. Yep, yeah, thank you, Ron. Um, so yeah, like you mentioned, uh, I'd been doing some accuracy testing with the Matrice 4 Enterprise um, accompanied with the uh, DRTK3 uh, unit. Um, our typical kind of uh, uh, unit or uh, drone and payload that we had been uh, using normally before this was the uh, Matrice 350 with the P1 payload. So it only seemed fitting that we did the accuracy uh, testing report comparing one to the other. Um, the site that we had flown, you can see on the screen there, uh, it was kind of an average site for something that we would use for a uh, topographic and location survey. Um, this one was about uh, 40 acres large. Um, uh, we flew multiple different missions. Uh, we set ground control points as well as the uh, checkpoints. Um, all of these were, uh, you, or, um, we used a uh, Spectra SP60 uh, to locate all this information. We did uh, multiple observations throughout the day and did a uh, network adjustment to make sure that everything was as accurate as possible. Thank you. I know the next one. Thank you. Um, Let's see. Yep, that's all good. So now to go over some of the um, the uh, flight settings and everything that we use for the M4E, as well as the uh, uh, for Ortho, as well as um, uh, Smart Oblique. We were flying at an altitude of 170 feet AGL, uh, speed of 46.9 miles per hour, which um, blew my mind that we were flying a drone that fast to go uh, get uh, photogrammetry data. Um, uh, normal 70-80 side forward overlap. Uh, the entire flight time for 40 acres was uh, 9 minutes and 2 seconds uh, with a grand, uh, ground sampling distance of 1.56 uh, centimeters per pixel um, and 1,000 images roughly. Um, next up, we did a uh, smart oblique flight. Um, this one was at a range of 8.2 to 33.6. Um, if anyone, everyone's aware of Smart Oblique features, uh, the drone will automatically go slower and faster depending on where it is in the site in order to collect more or less information. So these are the test results we found when we compare the Matrice 4 Enterprise with the P1 system, uh, Richard did. And as you can see, when we're talking about the accuracy, where uh, this is the accuracy uh, unit in meters, and uh, when we're comparing from the Smart Oblique and Nadir, uh, one interesting thing we found out is when we're comparing the results with applied ground control points and without applying ground control points are extremely similar when using the Matrice 4 Enterprise. Because you can these numbers, these numbers are very similar compared to the P1. You see the improvements on the accuracy on the P1 side when applying ground control point. This indicates significantly improvement on the system accuracy, not, a, not on the global accuracy side. So this is due to the technology behind it. I wish I had more time to talk about and break through. Uh, but long story short, we're able to find out pretty similar results in terms of accuracy comparing to the P1. Consider the P1 camera itself costs about the same as the, mm -hmm. the drone system, uh, which is extremely uh, uh, impressive results. Uh, with that being said, I think that's everything. But Richard, I want to leave it to you in case you have uh, anything to add on to um, this. Yeah, I guess the last thing I would say is, I mean, the comparison between the two, it's, it was insane how similar they were. I mean, we use the P1 on a daily basis. Uh, we've mapped over 40,000 acres of, of uh, projects. And uh, I mean, I can see this being a very useful tool on uh, a lot of those different projects. So very happy about it. And then uh, I guess the last thing I wanted to bring up was, uh, 
just something that we kind of use for every project that we work on. This is kind of our five point check system. Um, this kind of ensures that we get the most accurate results out of everything that we're doing. Um, so every project we have, we have we are, uh, our uh, photogrammetry data set, which is our point cloud and ortho. We have our LiDAR data set. Um, then we have our ground control points, which are, which are located by surveyors checkpoints located by surveyors, as well as our check shots, which are uh, manholes and valves, anything else that surveyors are picking up. Uh, we layer all this information on top of each other, and this is how we kind of prove a, uh, the most accurate results out of every project that we do. Yeah, yeah thank you very much. And uh, that was everything about this session. If you have more questions, please reach out to us via the DJI Enterprise booth and surveyor booth. Yep. Thank you all. Thank you, guys.